family and welcome to New Creation Family Church Online. In the next hour or so, you're going to be encouraged and challenged with your walk with God. And it's our prayer and hope that you'll feel a part of our church through your time spent with us. Thank you for joining us. And please know that if at any time you'd like to contact one of our pastors, then there's a contact number accompanying this video. You can send an SMS, WhatsApp, or you could call us. We would love to connect with you and pray with you. Let's go ahead with this week's online service. Good morning, New Creation, and welcome to church. Welcome to our online platform. We're streaming live from the auditorium this morning, and it's such an honor to have you with us. Dean, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. I see everyone's sending you lots and lots of comments. You can see that, that we love you like crazy in our church. So good to have you. Good morning to everyone else who's joining us this morning on Facebook or on YouTube. If you're watching this later on in the day, thank you for being a part of our church. Thank you for keeping up with what's going on in our services. We want to invite you to come and join us next week. Sunday morning at 9 a.m. We're a relational church. We like to get together. We like to have the congregation of the saints. But it's such, a, it's such an honor for us to be able to bring all of, uh, of, of God's presence, a little bit of what God's doing into the lives of everyone watching this, either this morning or during the week. It's very, very exciting. Um, if you are new with us this morning, Helen, I want to give a shout out to you for, for coming and visiting us. Everyone else, if um, you are watching us for the first time, whether it be during the week or whether it be here this, this morning on Sunday morning, I want to let you know that, like, like I said earlier, we are a relational church, and that means that we want to get to know you. We want to know how we can serve you, how we can pray for you. And so if that is you, and you're on our church online platform this morning, you will see a link on the side in the comments that says, I'm new here. Why don't you go ahead and click that button? That'll teach you a little bit more about our church, take you to our website, and show you around a bit. Otherwise, you will find a link to our website somewhere accompanying this video. Go ahead and click that link to go to our website. Let us know who you are where you come from, and what we can do to serve you. New Creation members, if you're with us this morning, why don't you go ahead and invite someone to church? I know I say this every week, but on Facebook, you could start a Facebook watch party inviting your friends to come and join you at church this morning. I think that's really exciting because if we were here in the auditorium, you wouldn't exactly be able to, to quickly pop out and invite a friend and bring them to come sit next to you. But because we're doing this all digitally, it's just a click away. It's just a little link. Go invite someone to come and join you. And maybe maybe Paul's message is going to be really encouraging this morning. I can't promise anything, but maybe it's a, it's a word in season for some, someone out there. Um, if you are... Uh, yeah, if you're, if you're on the new creation platform, you should see a link on the side that can then take you to a, uh, yeah, uh, just a media kind of picture that, that you can share on some social media platform that will invite someone to come and watch this live stream. All right, I want to I wanna turn your attention quickly to um, John 3.16. John 3.16 says what? What does John 3.16 say? Come on, if you don't know the answer to that, I'm, 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 I'm afraid we're going to be preaching the wrong sermon. We need to start at the basics. But if you do know, quickly type it into the comments. Let's see who's first. I want to see who puts that verse out first. I'm waiting. Nobody. Come on. My money's on you, Simon. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life so we have been encouraged in this last series to love God with all of our minds <clears throat> and I want to turn our attention to loving God so how do we love God we love him with all our heart our soul and our mind but a great example of how to love God is given in that verse John 3:16, and that's God so loved the world that he gave and that's a really powerful um kind of a kind of thought you know if you want to love someone we know about the five love languages and one of them is giving um, during this time of COVID, we've had the lockdown period and we've had so many people in desperate need. A new creation, you guys have given so generously that it blows all of our minds. It really, really challenges 
all of us to, to be even more generous in our own capacities. So the Barnabas Fund has been supporting so many of our, our members that are in need, so many of our family congregants that are struggling during this COVID time, and they've been doing such a fantastic job, and they continue to get requests for help all the time, which means they continue to have a real need for, for support during our COVID time. The, the worst of it hasn't even arrived yet. So I want to challenge us to keep Barnabas in mind, to keep the CIA circles in mind. I don't know if you saw the social media uh, post we kind of shared this week. We've, we've been able to feed over 1,000 families during this time, which I think is just incredible. It's not 1,000 people, it's 1,000 families during this time. And we're keeping food on the table for a lot of families out there. And so thank you for enabling that new creation and I wanna encourage you to keep on doing that. You should see a link on the screen now that shows you the SnapScan code as well as the bank details. If you'd like to give your tithes and offerings this morning, I want you to keep that in mind as well, that God gave everything of himself to give us what we needed the most in our time of desperate need. So thank you for your giving. Thank you for your participation in supporting this church. Um, I also want to say, if you want to give something besides uh, finances, and I know that the finances can be a bit difficult during this time, we are looking for some help. There is a lot of donation in terms of food that have been arriving at the offices that we like to distribute to our community. We just need a little bit of help. We need some, some people who have cars, access to cars, um, to come and collect the parcels and go distribute them in Windsor. If you want to give of your time and, and that interests you, then why don't you get, get a hold of Teresa, either send an email to admin at newcreation.co.za, go to our website or send her a WhatsApp if you have her number. She would love to, to tell you who you can pick up a parcel for, you can go drop it off. Following Fred's testimony last week, I think that is something that, that should excite all of us. Then I want to just point your attention to our prayer week. We haven't done a, a prayer day in a few uh, weeks, but we are planning to have a week week of prayer. That's not going to be happening this week. It's going to be happening the week after. So next week, Sunday, we'll be giving out all the prayer topics, and then we'll be moving to a week of prayer. Um, I think that's all I needed to tell you about this morning. So we're going to head into a time of worship now, and like every week, like we say, we want to encourage you to close your eyes, calm your soul, and allow God's presence into your living room. So I hope you enjoy this worship time, and we'll see you after. Good morning, church. Welcome to church. I'd love to read you guys a scripture this morning from Psalm 145. I want to read you a few verses from the message translation. It says, I lift you high in praise, my God, my King. I'll bless your name into eternity. Verse 8 says, God is all mercy and grace, not quick to anger, is rich in love. God is good to one and all. Everything he does is suffused with grace. Creation and creatures applaud you, God. Your holy people bless you. They talk about the glories of your rule. They exclaim over your splendor, letting the world know of your power for good, the lavish splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom eternal. You never get voted out of office. God always does what he says and is gracious in everything he does. God gives a hand to those down on their luck, gives a fresh start to those ready to quit. All eyes are on you, expectant. You give them their meals on time. Generous to a fault, you lavish your favor on all creatures. Everything God does is right. The trademark on all his works is love. God's there listening for all who pray, for all who pray and mean it. He does what's best for those who fear Him, hears them, call out and saves them. God sticks by all who love Him, but it's all over for those who don't. My mouth is filled with God's praise. Let everything living bless Him, bless His holy name from now to eternity. Lord, we want our mouths to be filled with your praise this morning. And every other morning, and every moment through the day, we want our mouths to glorify the King who is ruling, the King who is in charge. Jesus, we acknowledge that you are the King.
this era. So Lord, we're going to praise you. We're going to speak out your powerful name this morning. There is power in the name of Jesus. Lord, come and work in our hearts as we praise you and lift you up together. Amen. Two, three, four.
God, you're with us in the fire. God, you're with us through our valleys. You're with us on our high mountaintops. We worship you. We glorify you. We invite you into our living rooms, our bedrooms, our kitchens, wherever we might be this morning. I pray that this morning, this word may be an encouraging word for us. And yeah, you may be lifting our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. So Amy seemed to really have appreciated my face on screen. So she gave me an extra 10 seconds of screen time there. We're going to be starting a new series this morning. And as we start this new series, Paul is going to be introducing us to the book of 1 Corinthians. And in this book of 1 Corinthians, we're going to go through a series called Strength in Weakness. So Paul, who's preaching both at Justin and Dora's church, as well as at our church this morning, he's just this multi-talented man. We're very excited to, to hand over to him and start off our brand new series. Paul? Good morning. Let me just uh, correct Gavin. We will be, good morning. We will be looking at the letter of two Corinthians, not one Corinthians, Gavin. But thanks anyway. Well, those of us in Joburg, uh, we know that um, things are getting real here and things start hitting closer to home and we start knowing people, um, family, friends or work colleagues who have been affected by this pandemic. So I wanted to start off today by asking five questions and I'd love you to see how many of these questions you can answer yes to. And then in the comments below, I'd love to see how many of you get three or four or five out of five of these questions that I'm asking today. So do you know anyone who has tested positive for COVID-19? As I said, a family friend or a work colleague. Um, do you then know someone who has died from COVID-19? I know that our, our numbers are escalating, especially in Joburg, but at least our death rate percentage is still quite low. Thirdly, do you know anyone who has lost their job because of the pandemic? Fourthly, do you know anyone who has taken a salary reduction? And last one, do you know anyone who is really struggling emotionally during this time? Please, in the comments below, I'd love to see how many of you maybe answer yes to three or four. I spoke to someone yesterday who was able to answer five out of five of these. They know someone um, in close proximity or in relationship who has been affected by this pandemic. So I see a two come in i see a one that's looking good um it will be interesting to watch as we go on over the next few weeks um what it's going to look like so today as gavin said we're starting a new series called strength and weakness and it's a study of two corinthians and i've been really praying about us going through a book of the bible that can help encourage us during this time that we're going through really a letter that will will speak to our situation uh, so this this letter talks about uh, god's power his strength is made perfect in our weakness that his grace is sufficient for us um, it's a letter that has a lot of encouragement and comfort in it and it's a letter that teaches us how to live dependently on him whether it's in strength or in weakness so if you have your bibles here you can turn to 2 corinthians i'm going to have it up on the screen you can follow with me i'll be reading from the new living translation um, but i'd like to just give you some background to this letter very quickly well paul planted this church in corinth and you can read about that in acts 18 and he gets report of some of the challenges and the problems and he sends a letter this um, first letter we don't have access to 1 Corinthians 5 verse 9 says when I wrote to you before I told you not to associate with people who indulge in sex, uh, sexual sin so there is a, a letter that was sent um, before 1 Corinthians and then Paul writes 1 Corinthians um, in the spring of 55 which technically could be 2 Corinthians and then we know that there was a painful visit that he went and he, he met with the church and it's described as being the, the painful visit you can read about that in 2 Corinthians 2 verse 1 and then we know that there was a, another letter that was sent which we also don't have access to and that was known as the severe letter this is a letter where he he said he wrote it with tears in his eyes um, he was obviously confronting some real situations and it really grieved him and he wrote it with tears and um, then we we go on and we get uh, uh, Titus brings some more news and now we have access to 2 Corinthians which was written which technically could be 
either 3rd Corinthians or 4 Corinthians. So we will call it the, the, the study of 2 Corinthians, but technically it could be 3rd uh, or 4th Corinthians. I just want to remind you about a letter. So this is a letter that was sent to the church of Corinth. The thing about the letter is we don't always know what the response was. What were the reports that he was getting, um, which we don't always have access to, and then he, he writes in response to it. So it can feel like we're jumping into the middle of a of a story with characters and situations that we may not have the full details of. It's like when I start watching a series with my wife and she's already halfway through it and I jump on and I have to kind of work out who these characters are, what's the, the backstory and what is actually going on. And then secondly, the thing about this, this letter is that it is not a sermon. It's not a sermon like Ephesians and Romans. It is a very personal letter. So Paul wrote most of the New Testament and um, if someone were to ask you what was Paul's most personal letter, this would be it. It would be 2 Corinthians. It is known as his most personal letter. So it is a, a, a letter that addresses the mess of life. And I really like this, the messiness that we're going through in life and the things that we're facing. This really brings across Paul's pastoral heart. If you're a counselor or someone that has a heart for people, you'll really see this side of Paul in his writing in 2 Corinthians. So let's start in chapter 1, verse 1, and then we'll work our way to verse 11 today. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Jesus Christ and from our brother Timothy. I am writing to God's church in Corinth and to all of his people throughout Greece. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others. When we are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. This letter, oopsie. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. Even when we are weighed down with troubles, it is for your comfort and salvation. For when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Then you can patiently endure the same things we suffer. We are confident that, that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in the comfort God gives us. We think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die, but as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely on, uh, only on God who raised the dead. And he did rescue us from mortal danger, and he will rescue us again. And we have peace, uh, we have placed our confidence in him, and he will continue to rescue us. And you are helping us by praying for us. Then many people will give thanks because God has graciously answered so many prayers for our safety. So today I want to just go to verse 3. So he starts off with a typical greeting of a letter. And then he goes on to say this. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says, our God is our merciful Father. Isn't that a great picture? of God being this merciful Father. And it says, and the source of all comfort. This Greek word parakalesis um, is, is the word where we find the English translation comfort and um, consolation or encouragement or to call to one side. And this verb form is found um, Many times in this letter, I think it appears 10 times in, from verses 3 to 7 and 14 times in the rest of the letter. So this is going to be a common theme that we see, this word uh, parakalesis that comes through. And it's quite interesting that in the, in the Greek word, we can get the word encouragement and we can also get the word comfort. Now, I'm not too sure what you think about when you think of the word comfort. I, I have this picture of a mother comforting a child and there's, there's, there's a special way that a mother can comfort her child. And then I also have an idea of the comfort that a, a wife can give a husband or a husband can give a wife and the intimacy of a, of a, of a covenant relationship. And then I also think about community how a community can come alongside and bring comfort and encouragement to someone. 
This English word comfort is from this Latin word confortus, which means brave together. And I love this picture. I love this analogy. And I really think it's so relevant for what we're going through around the world globally and what we're going through in this nation. It is having people that can come alongside us and be brave together. When I look at our economic climate, when I look at the, I think I read an article this week, three million people have lost their jobs. I think two million of those are women. And, and I look at what is happening with crime and I look at really just all, all that is going on in our, in our nation at the moment. And I need us to be brave together. I need us to be built into community. I need us to be in a relationship with one another where we can be brave together. I'm not asking something from you, I'm, I'm trusting something for you, that you can have these sort of relationships, that we can be uh, brave together. What is quite interesting about this Greek word is that it's the same Greek word that is used to describe the Holy Spirit. Jesus used this word to describe the other that would come when he was going to leave, that he would send the Holy Spirit, the, the parakalita, the parakalisa, which is the, the very word that is used for our comforter. That, that, that is the word that is described for the Holy Spirit as our helper, to, helper and our comforter. You can read that in John 14, verse 16. That the Holy Spirit is permanently called closely alongside us to journey with us, to coach us, to give us instruction and direction as he counsels us in this journey of life. So this common theme that we're going to keep finding in, the, in this book is affliction, affliction and comfort. These two words keep appearing together. It's not just affliction or it's not just comfort, but it's both of them together. Now what affliction are you facing at the moment? What knot in your stomach or anxiety or stress do you have as you're facing... Yeah, just uncertainty about um, our current work situations or maybe your finances or the country that we're living in. There's so much uncertainty and affliction that we're facing. And um, we're all dealing with the stress and many of us are handling it differently. And I was thinking about this word comfort. What do you do to comfort yourself? What do you do to encourage yourself when you've had a stressful day? Now, when we talk about comfort food or emotional eating, maybe that temporarily helps you feel a little bit better when you get home after a crazy day or maybe you enjoy a glass or a few glasses of, of red wine in the evening as a source of comfort but who knows these these forms of comfort that we look for are, are temporary they're not long lasting I was reading an article this week that spoke about 13 ways to comfort yourself, 13 healthy ways to comfort yourself during what we're going through. And they spoke about uh, st uh, stretching, waking up early and stretching, or listening to soothing music, or practicing alternate nasal breathing, nostril breathing or practicing mindfulness or reaching out to others. And yes, there's some good practices in there on how to try and find comfort. But I've got three points this morning. And the first point is quite um, evident and, and it's quite a big point that, that I need us to all understand. And, and, and it's this, God is the source of our comfort. And we find this quite clearly in verse three, as he says, God is our merciful father and the source of all comfort. And I love this word source, because as I said, there are many places we can go to. We can look to our friends as a source of comfort, which I'm going to get to, which is a good thing. But what is our source? Who is our source of comfort? Where do we find our comfort? And he says, he comforts us in all of our troubles. So my first point that I want us to really learn today and be reminded of today is that God is the source of of comfort. He is our merciful Father. And in this time, in this time of affliction, and in the weeks and months that lie ahead, and the difficulties that I know we will continue to face, I, I haven't really looked at the numbers, um, how many of you answered the questions, um, if anyone got four out of five or five, of, five out of five, but those numbers might grow as we start coming into contact with more and more people who have lost a loved one, or who have lost a job, or who have taken a pay cut, or are struggling emotionally, that in this time we will know how to seek God as our comforter. He has sent us the Holy Spirit as our comforter, the one that walks alongside us, the one that helps us be brave. 
And I'm really trusting that God's grace and mercy will be sufficient for us as we face what we're going through at the moment. Uh, so, so God being the source of our comfort means that there is no true lasting comfort outside of God. Yes, your glass of wine or yes, your whatever you do, whether it's even sin and some of the things we get involved in that may give us a temp- temporary fix or comfort. But God is the one that, that brings the, the lasting comfort. And there is no comfort that will sustain or there's no comfort that will sustain, no comfort that will endure apart from the comfort that God offers us. And that is what he offers offers you today. That is what he offers you in your situation and the circumstance that you're currently dealing with. So that's point one. The second point is that God calls us to comfort others. And we continue reading in verse four. He comforts us uh, in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others. When When they are troubled, they will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. Their their affliction might have or was persecution. Our affliction and stress and trouble that we're facing today is very different. I understand that there are Christians around the world that are being persecuted for their faith. And we may go through that as a nation as we see some of the attacks on on Christian individuals um, saying things in the news in, in this nation. So we don't know what we're going to face going forward. But this is an amazing analogy. God, number one, is our source of comfort. Then he says he comforts us so that we can comfort others. We can allow the Holy Spirit and God to comfort us. So then that, so we can play then a role in the, the way that God is playing with us. We can play that same role with others. Um, it, it says in verse 6, even when we were weighed down with troubles, for it was for your comfort and salvation. Don't you find that in- interesting that it was for your comfort and salvation that you were weighed down with these troubles? Um, and then it says, then you can patiently endure the same things we suffer. I know many of you have been through difficult situations. I know many of you in your life have, has, have faced difficult things. And God uses comforted people to comfort others. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing that life can happen? We can, we can go through the, the trauma of life, yet we can find and meet with the God that comforts us. And then God can take us that have been through that hellish situation and use us to comfort other people. So I can walk into a home as a pastor and I can sit with people and I can try and bring comfort. But many of you will be far better at that because you yourselves have been through that situation. I know people who have lost a child or have lost a spouse or have lost a company or have lost everything. And you yourself that have been through it and have seen God come through in miraculous ways of how God has met you in that situation, you can bring that comfort to others. You can, God can turn that mess, that story in your life and use it to minister to other people. Remember this Greek word. Remember how it talks about being an encouragement, a call to one side, to console, to comfort other people. So I'm encouraging us as this body in this time of so-called lockdown where we have social distancing to still be the church, to still play this role. And this is why it involves us opening our lives and sharing our lives with each other. This is why it means that you need to be vulnerable enough to share your story, to share what you've been through, to share what you're currently going through so that you can then comfort others that are going through the same situation or a situation that's very similar. So I want to encourage you not to isolate yourselves, to withdraw during this time. I've tried to contact life group leaders and get a sense of what is happening in the church. And it, and it can seem quite distant because we're not meeting together on a Sunday. And, and in this time, it's very easy for us to, to back off from relationship. But I'm encouraging you, I'm asking you to keep pursuing relationship, to keep reaching out and encouraging and comforting each other. I think about those matriculants that cannot participate and maybe first team rugby this year they don't have their matric dance I think about those who have lost their businesses I think about the elderly who are not able to see 
their grandchildren. I know that many of you are going through difficult things, but I know that others are watching you. They're watching how you are handling this situation, how you're handling your trouble. I know that I have unbelievers watching how I deal with my circumstances. I know that I've got weaker believers watching my life, and they're watching your life too. And I trust that you can live in a way that glorifies and honors God in this. So practically, I've been thinking this week, well, how then do we do this? How can we encourage one another? Hebrews 3 verse 13 says, but encourage one another daily as long as it's called today. And I've got a challenge with us. I want to challenge us to participate in this. This is our call as the body of God to be a comfort to another person, to be an encourager to another person. I love this quote that says, a word of encouragement during a failure is worth more than an hour of praise after success. Sorry, I need to get to that. There we go. A word of encouragement during a failure is worth more than an hour of praise after success. It's those moments, it's those opportunities when someone comes and, and meets with you in that difficulty. Those are the moments where we hold on to. Those are the things that encourage us. So how do we do this? Encouraging others in silence. And I know there are times where we just need to stand with people. We just need to come alongside them, to be with them, to sit with them. I, I know in the, the Jewish culture, it's called sitting shiva when someone loses a loved one and people just come and sit with you. People just come and sit with you. They don't necessarily give you advice or share with you or ask anything of you, but they sit in your midst and, and encourage you in silence. I've learned in my marriage that most times, my wife is online, she can tell me if I'm correct, I can't see her face this morning. Most times she's not looking for someone to give her advice. She's not looking for someone to try and solve her problems. She's not looking for a pastor. She's looking for someone to listen, for someone to hold her, to sit with her and to, to hear her out. Milan, won't you comment and just tell me if I'm correct in saying this. But there are times where we encourage each other with, with silence. And then there are times where we encourage each other using words. And I want to encourage you to send that WhatsApp to make that phone call. You know the times where someone pulls me aside and says, I just want to encourage you. Those are the moments that you hold on to because there's so many opportunities to feel discouraged. There's so many opportunities to feel hopeless and down. And then I want to encourage us as a church to practically find ways to love each other during this time. There are over 41 another's in the New Testament. One another, uh, love one another, pray for one another, encourage one another, build each other up, carry each other's burdens, spur one another towards love and good deeds. Each one should use whatever gifts he has received to serve one another. Though we are not meeting in a building, we are still called to be the church. This is such a great opportunity for the church to be more active than ever because we can still be his body. We can still be his hands and feet. And I want to encourage you again please continue to engage one another please don't disengage don't withdraw and isolate yourself reach out and let's live out these one another's even though we may not be allowed to get into each other's home just yet I know we can go and meet in a casino or a restaurant but let's find ways to live out these one another's during this time I love this quote, never get tired of doing little things for others, for sometimes those little things occupy the biggest part of their heart. So this week's challenge is this. I want you to every day trust for someone that you can encourage to send a WhatsApp message or a phone call so that we can be brave together. And last point is this, as I wrap up, uh, in verse 8 it says, we think... Um, we think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We don't understand what he's going through here, but he says this. But as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely on God. Isn't that a powerful verse? We learn to stop relying on ourselves. We learn to stop relying on the money that we have in our bank account or the, the job that I'm working for. But we had to learn how to rely on God. I think this is a word for us that God is wanting 
wanting to teach us to rely on Him. And then it says, and we have placed our confidence in Him. No longer placing our confidence in the things of this world that one minute can be here and the next minute be gone. But He wants us to learn how to put our confidence in Him. So our lot, my last point is for that, that God would teach us to stop relying on ourselves. And my question for us as we go into our small groups, our, our Zoom life group meetings after this is, how do you know when you've stopped relying on yourself and have learned to rely on God? What does that look like? What does that look like one week and, and the next week it can obviously change again? So won't you engage around that question? So may you come to know God as the source of your comfort. May you not just pursue the people that bring you comfort, but may you pursue the source of comfort in your life. And secondly, may you remember that you are called to comfort others. The comforter then can comfort other people, and God wants to use you to comfort someone and encourage someone this week. And lastly, to stop relying on yourself and learn to rely on God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are our merciful Father. We thank you that you are the source of our comfort. And God, when we pursue the temporary things in life that we think will encourage us, that we think will um, uh, uh, comfort us, God, we want to acknowledge you as our source of comfort. And I pray for each person, God, that is struggling today. I pray that they may know your presence and may know your comfort um, in, a, in a real special way. And then, God, won't you use us as your body to encourage others, to comfort others. Help us, God, to just prioritize us and be intentional about being that encouragement, living out these one another's with those that you've called us to share, to share life with. And then, God, won't you teach us this lesson, how to rely on you, how to put our trust in you, how to put our confidence in you. God, won't you help us to learn this lesson so that whatever lies in the future, whatever difficulties and troubles we face, that we will be able to endure and live a life that glorifies and honors you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Over to you, Gavin. So one of the restrictions that we have in an um, online service is just giving room for the Holy Spirit to move in our lives. And Paul's just encouraged us to, to take our eyes off of our own sources of comfort and maybe put our eyes on God and, and to maybe consider in our lives who it is that, that God is calling us to comfort. So I want to encourage us just to, to, to have some, some quiet moments with no words being spoken, no music being played, just us and God's Spirit allowing us to reorientate our lives, to reorientate our souls, take control of our souls, as David talks about in the Psalms. And yeah, let's just focus on God. Just give him your attention in this time. So I don't know who out there is needing a prayer of reorientation or, or who feels like they know who God is calling them to comfort. But if, if you want to be included in a prayer, why don't you like raise your hand or put a comment out there so we know to include you or, or, or just you know, prostrate, prostrate, prostrate yourself before God and uh, let's... Let's just be included in this prayer together. There's power in the strength in numbers. Yeah, we're two or more gathered in Jesus' name. He's there and in the midst. So let's pray to him together. Father, we have so many distractions around us, and we're living in a, a time in history where distractions are easy clicks away, following us into even our most intimate places. But we, don't, we want that to stop this morning, God. We don't want that to affect our relationship with you. And so I pray for everyone watching this, this broadcast this morning or, or watching the replay later, Father. I pray, I pray for us to, to allow those distractions, allow those, those clutches to, to kind of just yeah, dissolve away. May we have nothing else but you as our comfort. You as our pursuit. 
And Father, give us, give us the compassion and conviction to chase after those who you're calling us to encourage. May we be your hands and feet in this COVID time. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to move into another time of worship. And let's, let's keep our attention fixed firmly on Jesus. And let's praise him this morning. Oh, praise. 
Thank you for joining us for our online sermon. If you feel that God spoke to you during the message and you'd like to respond in any way, then I just want to remind you that our pastors are waiting for you to connect with them. They'd love to pray with you and encourage you in your walk with Jesus. Hope you have a great week and we hope to see you again as we faith journey together.